Hey guys, Clutch Angling here, and today we are back in Fredericton chasing that monster that we missed last time. Uh, sorry for the last video, the filming was kind of kind of poor at the end. We uh, kind of got into a situation where I moved the camera because I switched lures, and my tripod is actually in my tackle box. So when I swap lures, I move the camera, and then uh, of course, that's when it bites. Uh, the picture of the muskie on the video is the actual muskie. Uh, it was 30, 32 inch. It wasn't too big, but uh, it was still a good fish, really healthy. Gave it an okay fight. It was on a small rod on that one, the Pin Pierce 3. Love this rod. It's a little, it's a little small, but hey, gives you a better fight. Can't, uh, can't, can't go wrong with that. So today we are back in Freddy chasing a monster today i'm alone it's minus two or like minus one it's starting to be cold so today is probably gonna be my last day out in the water i'm going to quebec tomorrow so we'll see how it goes today hopefully our luck is better than yesterday stay tuned i'll be using a brunswick bait it's kind of a sucker pattern it's a beautiful lure i was given this to try it out and uh try to catch a monster on this Hopefully we can uh, hook onto a 40 plus, onto a local bait, and uh, they're just beautiful baits. Check them out, Brunswick Baits, rock on. So today I'll be using a three rod setup. I got one right here, close to the prop. I got two on the side. I got one shallow bait, one little deeper bait, and also my prop block is also a deeper bait. Uh, see how that goes. I have an orange Cosmos Fire Tiger on that one. And then uh, I think this one is not a tough shad, but it's some type of shad. I just bought it, I'm gonna try it out. And then this one is a sucker, the Brunswick bait. So hopefully the, the, those are the right baits. I know last time we got him on tough shad, but sadly I did lose my only tough shad twice in a row. So, uh... Alright guys, no luck in the first spot. We tried the walking bridge in Fredericton. Now I think it's time for a bait check. We've been in the water for about 20 minutes. I've marked two fish so far. One potential big one. The other one a little smaller. It's up here. Start with the Cosmos. I'm trying to troll about around 3.5 mile an hour. Now it's very hard to keep that speed going down current because down current, you have all that uh, uh, current with you. So even if you're going 3.5 miles an hour, your baits are not really moving. And this is exactly why I do bait checks here. Full weeds, good old St. John weeds. Our favorite, favorite weed. Uh, probably hit the bottom of this one. I'm guessing I hit bottom over there. There was a flat and I didn't see it coming. I was changing the batteries in the GoPro, so I'm, get, I'm guessing all the baits are gonna have a bunch of weeds on them. Let's see. So I'll show you the lure right here. This is a jointed lure right here. It's locally made. Really good looking. I really like the action it does in the water. It stays in the shallows. It does not like high speed trolling, but it does the job. Caught this one, I caught our muskie on that one last time on the last video. Sadly, like I said, uh, the camera died, so I didn't really have time to show you anything. But uh, this was the lure. So hopefully today we get another one on this one. I leave this one about 30 feet behind me. That was almost a fail. About 30 feet behind me. There you go. That one's good. That one there. Get this chat up. Little weeds. This is a smaller bait. 
trying small, or sometimes they like the small, the small baits, you know. A big fish will attack a small bait as well. You don't always have to go super big. Catch the big ones. So this is a newer lure I got from Minnow Tackle Shop downtown Freddy yesterday. They were on sale. And uh, trying them out today. If you haven't went to, if you haven't, man, I suck at filming. You know that? If you guys haven't been to Minnow Tackle Shop downtown Fredericton, make sure you go check them out. This week it's Black Friday. <clears throat> They've got a bunch of deals. They got deals on Poseidon for Muskie. They have uh, deals on the Echo Map for uh, the Garmin Sonar. The Echo, the Echo Map 95. A bunch of smallmouth stuff. And also no tax on reels. So if you guys want to stack up for next season, I highly recommend going to Minnow this week. And yeah. They've been a huge help. I get all my lures from there, my rods from there. They really know how to hook you up. I think I just marked a big fish. I'm doing so many different things at the same time, I don't even know what I'm saying. But yeah, if you had the chance, make sure you go to Minnow. Go see Amanda, Jason. They'll be there to help you out. If you need anything, new rod, lures, they, they, they have a bunch of selections and uh, really for anyone should be good so trying to jake out look at that took the shot off and uh yeah after that we might swap spots soon and uh try to hope that hoping to get that big one No luck with the shad, the little shad. Change her up. Changing lures sometimes can do a difference. Let's see how this goes. Same thing, I'm gonna let this one maybe 50, 40 feet in the back. And, uh, see how it goes. All set. All right, guys, time for spot number three. We have done both bridges. We've done the walking bridge, the Prince Margaret bridge. Um, I marked a couple fish at the walking bridge and then uh, the Prince Margaret only one. It just didn't seem that big, so it's really, I don't think it's really worth staying. So now I'm gonna be going even lower in the river. Uh, I know there's some deep spots, nice structures over there. And then uh, maybe go back up river at the end of the day. Go try up there and uh, Let's see how our luck goes. See you guys later. Now I'm getting to a deeper zone. So I am gonna switch baits on that one. I did just do a bait check and I thought about it. And I'm gonna put a deeper diver. And uh, I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. Give me one second. Like I said, this is, this is my uh, camera holder right here. So every time I gotta switch baits, gotta move it around. I'll show you exactly what I'm gonna be using. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, uh, that's not the one. Too many baits, too many baits to look at. Where's that one? Yep, that one right here. So I'll be putting this on. Got a big lip, goes about 25 feet. 
Uh, we're fishing in 30 feet, like 30 to 35 feet right now. So a deep diver like this will definitely get their attention if they're down there. We're gonna get some good structures too, so I'll just have to be careful not to get stuck. That's the worst thing, guys. When you get stuck, you know, unstucking two to th three treble hooks is a lot harder than just one little hook. All you got to is they're expensive. Lures are definitely expensive. They're not free, not cheap. Switching this one, put this one on. And I wouldn't put that one too far back. 30, 40 feet maybe. It's a really deep diver. Give it a shot. It's about 30 feet behind me. And we are back to trolling. So nothing here. So let's go back up river. Uh, we came uh, quite a bit down and did some couple structures and nothing. I marked maybe one fish. So I'm gonna reel these back up and then let's go up river. I'm gonna try a spot that is a little sketchy. So definitely don't put your favorite lures on or your more expensive ones. Kind of put the ones that you wouldn't mind losing. As I can say that. They're all expensive, but there's a couple of them that you get, you know, you're connected to them, really. So, let me try that spot for a bit, see how that goes. I've lost a couple lures there, that's why I'm saying that. And it definitely hurts when you lose a, a bait that's 50 bucks. But there is a lot of fish at that, well, that place. We did, that's where we missed our big one last time. So hopefully, he will bite today. Definitely gonna be taking this lure off. Muskie is so a patient game. You have to be so patient. I'm telling you right now, if you have no patience in fishing, do not try muskie. It is not for you. <clears throat> If you don't mind trolling for hours and hours without getting a bite, and even days without a bite, then muskies for you. All right, let's get this puppy in action. It's gonna be a little frisky. Cover up. Phone away. Here we go.
next spot. My GoPro fell off my thing. Hopefully it didn't damage it at all. I don't think so. I was lucky on that. I had a big wave and it just went down. What? Gotta do what you gotta do to get the shots, right? So we are at the spot now. And uh, there's a lot of current and wind now. But she be pretty good. I'm gonna do a, a lure swap and then we'll get to trolling. All right guys, we made it to the spot. And uh, I don't have much battery left. These GoPros, when, the, when it's super cold out, they don't uh, keep their battery life much. Like I can probably do maybe 40 minutes with one battery. I got three, I got two on a charger, but they just don't charge fast as I drain them. So hopefully we get the fish on this pass or the second pass. So the spot is really the yacht club. There's a bunch of moorings. It really sucks because they're all attached to each other. So you know that the line is going everywhere and you might get hooked on them, right? So that's what I meant by putting lures that you don't really mind losing if you do lose them. Don't put your super expensive lures, even if you want to really want to catch one on them. Not worth it. You'll lose money, guarantee you. You know, if you get the rope that, you know, is across, you can pull it up. But uh, if you get that one is on an anchor, it's basically busted right there. You, you lose your lure. I lost two tough, I lost one tough shot to it that so far. The second tough shot uh, was, a, was a muskie, but there's a lot, a lot of, of fish here. Just be careful where you're going. That's basically all I'm saying. Hopefully you're locked. I put super shallow bait so we don't rub those ropes at the bottom. But uh, still, it is really hard to mark where they are. Right now I'm on the outside. I'm gonna go up all the way in and I come back out. I won't just go straight in. I guess I could here, but see, like the moorings here with the current is what happens is they go underwater. Sometimes you'll see them at the surface. You come back up, they're not there anymore. So you really get lo you get lost. So you gotta keep your eye open and really gotta be careful with the moorings. Right about here, I should be safe. It's really hard with the sun reflection too. I can see the moorings on my sonar, so if I pass on one of them, I will slow down immediately and try to get my lures back to pull back up. I put all floaters on, so as soon as I leave the gas going, they'll get to float right back up. So, let's see what's going on here. Right now we're into the moorings. There's a fish here, really big fish here. That's 20 feet down. Thing. There's not a lot of people come out here because it's sketchy. I see another boat ahead of us. I think that's Master Crow. If you guys haven't watched his channel yet, go watch Master Crow. He does amazing videos. He's got underwater views and everything. Really cool guy and everything. Sometimes you get right beside them. Even the prop, I'm scared for the prop. You gotta be careful at all times. Hopefully we get a fish. So we marked one big fish so far. It's the same exact spot where we lit, missed that big one. So I'm hoping that's the same one. But uh, last time he took my bait, so I'm wondering if he still has that bait in his mouth. No idea, he broke me on 80 pounds. Maybe my lure, not my lure, my knot was damaged. But it's very important guys, always check your gear. Always, always check your gear. Don't do the same mistake I do. Around here, I'm gonna start turning around. 
you're not an experienced boater, don't try to cut, don't try this spot. There's a big fish again. Big zigzags, big zigzags. Really get them if they're following you. And you're doing a zigzag. You speed up these lures and you slow down these lures and you do rotate again. Speed up these lures, lower that one. Really get them aggressive. Right here, I'm gonna turn. Could be a more in here or a fish. That could be a big fish. I stand up at all times. I can see in front of me if someone, if one of them pops up. Ugh. It's always stressful. Always stressful. I have one Jake in there. Hopefully that's the one that's gonna be catching it. I'm hoping that's the one. If I see that there's not much action, then I won't stay too, too long. Should be a mooring here. So there's one mooring there. Another one there, another one there, another one there. There's four in front of me. They like to use spider webs when they attach them all together. So really, even if you're far away from the piece of wood, the line goes through. And that's the one that are killers. This. Usually what I like to do is just come out, all the way out, and come back in. Get some follow. I gotta focus on this right here. I'm on neutral. I don't here, so it's Jake and uh, all the little fire tiger.
cars all the way to the engine. Such a mess, guys. This is why I don't recommend coming here. Hey, guys. Still no luck. Still out here. Really giving my best. It's probably my last day fishing today, so really giving it my all in. There's Master Crow at the Westmoreland. I was just talking to him, too. It's a rough day. It's been a rough couple days. And uh, to follow up from that, uh, when my, ga my camera died earlier, I did end up getting both my lures back. It was a pain in the butt, but we got them back. I had to cut everything on my line, but that's the thing with those moorings, is once you get in them, it's a pain in the butt to get your lures out. So I'm gonna be staying here for maybe another 45 minutes. I have another battery on the charger right now. And uh, Hopefully I can get the footage from my outro, but if I don't, I shall see you in the winter. In the winter, I have a couple plans going. I'm rebuilding my boat. Well, actually fixing it. I got a couple rivets that I need to fix and uh, probably gonna get a new paint on it and really gonna do a whole video on how I built my own boat. So this boat I actually bought for $2,000 on uh, the marketplace. It was completely rotten and it came with a 15 horse Honda 2006. And uh, I ended up selling the 15 horse uh, for 2200. So I actually made some money on that for the boat. And the trailer, the old trailer, I actually swapped for the electric motor I have in the front now. And uh, really I'm gonna go into full detail on how I built things and uh, why did I built them this way. And uh, also my lure preference. I'm gonna have a bunch of videos for you guys in the winter. It's not because the fishing season is over that I'm not going to be making videos. Also, I'm trying ice fishing this year, so we'll try that. And uh, my first video should be, my first fishing video on the boat will probably be in April, beginning of April for sturgeon. So uh, I'll see you then as well. Now, uh, wish me luck. Signing out. get my Brunswick bait and my Cosmos on it. I was lucky enough for that. Oh yeah, that seems like a lost bait for me. That one definitely is a lost Mark that tree right away. Right now, I had marked it with Jason yesterday, but he had his little sonar with me. I forgot to mark it on mine. I thought it was the other one for some reason, but no, it's this one right here. It's an 
nice tree I seen it it goes all the way eight feet to the surface oh, let's see if we can get that away at least my H jig it's not nothing too crazy if I do lose it it would suck I'll give it my best shot Approaching the end guys, I'm going to be trolling all the way to these pillars and then uh, make all the day, you know, five and a half hours, cold, no fish, it's all good. I've lost my fight today, but you know what, next year I will be more than ever motivated to get that big musky. Now that I know a little bit more about what I'm doing. Now that I have a little bit more experience and a couple new lures, next year I will get that 45 inch musky. Minimum 45 inch musky. I will try the best, the hardest to get it. I achieved my goals this year. I got my 40 inch striper. I got my musky. I also got my 28 inch walleye. And then I got a 37 inch northern pike. I guess I can count on 12 inch perch, 21 and a half inch smallmouth, 24 inch chain pickerel, and uh, what else? I guess I can add in, uh, I had like a 16 or 17 inch chub. I think that does it for this year. Oh, and also, big sturgeon, 40, uh, it was 49 inch sturgeon. It was a pretty big one. So, I'm pretty happy with my year. Now next year is a new year. I will be filming a lot more videos. I'm glad I picked up on making videos. I'm definitely gonna have to come with a better setup than having it on my tackle box and also for batteries and stuff. But uh, thank you for watching and then uh, stay tuned for the winter videos. Ice fishing and boat stuff and lure stuff and all that stuff. All that good, all, go all that good shenanigan. So are the pillars, guys. I'm gonna start retrieving my rods and uh, call it a day. Uh, we're at the pillars now. All right, guys. The boat is on the trailer. It's time to go home, make some food, cuddle my blanket because I was cold all day. No bites again, two days in a row. That's okay, that's musky fishing. Gotta get used to it. I'm up for the grind, but I think for this season, my grind is over. I'll uh, be making uh, that boat video soon. Um, I'm leaving for Quebec for a week, and after that I'm back, and I'm, I'm probably gonna start working on that video. And then also a lure review um, as well. So uh, stay tuned guys, don't forget to subscribe and to like the video. Comment below as well, what kind of videos would you guys like for um, for winter? Um, I'm gonna do some ice fishing videos. I'm fairly new to ice fishing as well. Um, I never really went, I think I went maybe five times in my lifetime, um, which is surprising, but I think I'm more of the kind of guy that likes to hunt the fish down with the boat. So it's gonna be something to get used to. Anyway guys, see you guys later.